And now we can have a look as said um, on this task 22 about plate capacitors or a plate capacitor. And what, what I can tell is that um, I also brought two metal plates uh, with, with two connection cords that we can put together with some plastic in between them to build a plate capacitor. So this is the larger option. Uh, I also have a smaller one and as some plastic um, insulation in between, I'm, I brought some plastic <laughs> and I brought some more plastic uh, which, which we can have as a thin layer and which we can also have as a double layer uh, to check what is the influence of, um, if I go back to the screen share, uh, so um, we have here two thin square metal plates with a side length of 10 centimeter. I'm not sure, I think this is larger than 10 centimeter, at least it um, looks larger to me, but I can measure. It's, this is 15 centimeters, so this does not, does not really fit to the, to the exercise task here, but um, yeah, anyhow, we could repeat, once we have the formula, we could also, of course, repeat it for the experiment. Um, they have a distance of one millimeter and they form a plate capacitor. And then we have air in between and this has a certain permittivity. Um, and this is some value that as an electric engineer, you could also uh, try to remember a little bit uh, this 8.854 times 10 to the power of minus 12 ampere seconds per um, volt meter. And so there's some um, some typo here in the task, so the the meter should be also in the in the denominator of this fraction, otherwise it does not fit. And so then we should calculate the capacitance of this plate capacitor. Um, then we charge it to a certain voltage. How large is the charge that is stored on a capacitor? Then we do something. We we change the distance um, between the plates. So what is the influence on the capacitance and what, how does the voltage change? Um, and then we discharge the, the capacitor and the question is how long does this take? So I would suggest to, um, as usual, start with task A. And yeah, how, how would you do this? which is in some then uh, 10 to the power of minus 2 square meters? Um, yes, because we have 0 0.1 meter and this squared gives us uh, 0 0.01 square meter. So okay, we, we already have the area of this plates. So um, how, how can we calculate capacitance then? Yeah, so we, we, we need to have this epsilon, this permittivity. And so then we, uh, we multiply with area. The larger the area, the larger the capacitance will be. And we divide by the distance. So the smaller the distance between the plates, also the larger the capacitance. And yeah, so we can insert these values. Um, 8.854 times 10 to the 10 to the power of minus 12 and then we have this unit of ampere seconds per volt meter multiplied with the 0 0.01 meter squared and then divided by one millimeter and this is what I will write as um, yeah, maybe 0 0.001 meter. And so then we see, uh, if we look at the units, that meter square and meter and meter will cancel each other, which is meaningful. Um, that, 
that's why this is the reason why we also need the meter, need to have the meter here in the in the denominator of this fraction. Um, and yeah, and the, re the the unit that is left is ampere seconds per volt. And how can we rewrite this unit? This is farad. And so then we just need to do some, let's say, number crunching with the remaining units. Um, yeah, and the capacitance that we get is something really, really small. Uh, so 10 to the power of minus 12 is pico. And um, here at the end, 0 0.001 divided by zero <laughs> divided by this gives us 10. So we get we, we should get something like 88.54 picofarad, right? Okay. Questions so far? I also say hello to the three people watching it on Twitch. Uh, also write something nice in the chat. Le let us know if this works. Okay, so this is not um, not a super large capacitance, even so you, you have quite large plates already and so on. And so you can imagine if you want to build a capacitor with some nanofarad and microfarad and even millifarad, then you need you need to have a very large area of these plates, let's say, and you need to have a very small distance. Um, and so often, of course, it's not, um, yeah, if you build a real capacitor, it would be no solid plates, it would be a very thin foil, and then you, for example, roll it up um, to get larger capacitors. So I have, I have some capacitors here, um, but this is some electrolytic capacitor. This, for example, um, this, small one has 22 microfarads. Um, but I think this can only handle maybe 10, no, 25 volts, what is written on here. And so usually it's a, if, if you just want to have a capacitor um, that can handle very small voltages, no problem, you can have a very thin distance between the two plates. But of course, if you want to have a capacitor that also works, um, for example, this one here, um, this yellow one, but this is, I think, not some electrolytic capacitor. Um, this one has just one, just one microfarad, and at least according to what is written on here, it can handle uh, 63 volts. But I, I'm not sure. Maybe I, I would, I would imagine that this can handle more. And I'm not sure what this one here is. We we can try to measure. But the thing is, if you want to have a capacitor that can handle and withstand larger voltages, it can be charged up to higher voltages. And of course, you also need bigger distance between the plates because otherwise there will be some, um, some short circuit between them. Okay. Then let's continue with task B. Uh, the capacitor is charged to a DC voltage of 10 volt. Uh, how large is the charge that is stored on the capacitor? Exactly. We have the voltage. We have the voltage. And the charge is equal to the product of the absorption. Okay, because the capacitance here, capacitance can be calculated this way of a plate capacitor, but very general um, capacitance is defined as the charge that we can store onto something mm, divided by the voltage or normalized to the voltage. So if we want to have the voltage, uh, no, we know the voltage, um, we know the capacitance, we want to have the charge. So as you said, charge is capacitance multiplied with voltage. And um, yeah, so we have this 88.54 picofarad uh, multiplied with 10 volt. So um, just multiplied with 10, we get eight 185.4 um, yeah and farad as we just said is ampere seconds per volt uh, volt will cancel each other so the unit that is left is ampere second which is the unit of 
charge. And how, how could we also um, name this unit or rewrite this unit as Coulomb? So I will write Coulomb. And then, of course, it's the Pico Coulomb, which is, once again, not too much. But um, yeah, charges, it's a little bit like the, um, the values of capacitors. So some micro Coulomb can be already quite a lot some milli coulomb are, are quite a lot. If you want to charge some coulomb somewhere, you need to have very large capacitors to do this. Okay. If you have some idea or question in between, you uh, you just interrupt me. Okay. Uh, which questions do you have so far? Okay. I, I would say this is also something. Um, not too complicated, so let's let's get let's come to some more complicated task maybe. So now we have charged, we have built this capacitor, we have charged it to this charge, and now we disconnect it from the DC voltage source that we had here with the 10 volts. And um, then we change the spacing of the plates to five millimeter. So the question is, what, what capacitance do we get now? So I will call this um, C dash maybe. And then how does the voltage change if we, if we do this to the spacing? And yeah, and, and we could do some further thinking about this problem, but okay, well, wh what does happen to the capacitance? It decreases, um, and it decreases by, by a factor of five, because uh, as we can see, uh, if we have five times the distance, so we could just write, okay, it's the old capacitance divided by five, um, 88 divided by five, 80 divided by 5 is 16 or so. Um, so maybe 17 something. Do you have a value? 17.708. Uh, okay, we will we, we, uh, just keep with 17.7 picofarad. Okay, so it's a fifth of the original capacitance. So then what happens to the voltage? They are, they are not, yeah, they are not, maybe not proportional, may, may, maybe. Um, so um, how could we calculate voltage? Um, we, we see here capacitance is charge divided by voltage. So voltage is charge divided by capacitance. So we have the charge divided by the capacitance. Okay, and so then the question is, what happens to the charge? It, it stays constant. It's, it's still the same as before, because we say, okay, the charged capacitor is disconnected from DC source, and so if it's disconnected from the source, the charge will not change anymore. So the charge remains the same to the charge that we, that we had before. Um, so we can say, okay, this is um, here is still the old charge, and here it's the the new capacitance is the old capacitance divided by five, and Q divided by C. If we would go back here to this formula, um, yeah. So here we had said, okay. Um, voltage is charge divided by capacitance. So charge divided by capacitance is the voltage. So I could write it's five times the voltage. And uh, the voltage that we had was 10 volts. So now the new voltage is 50 volts. Yeah, so this is not five volts. This is five times the voltage, and uh, five times the original voltage is 50 volt. Okay, um, so interestingly, we get more voltage. 
we, we, we increase the voltage. And um, I mean, it's not really part of this question here, but we could probably also do calculate the energy that is stored on the capacitor. So uh, how can we calculate energy? And good morning to the Necro Monger God who is on the chat and gives a thumbs up. So how, how could we calculate energy that is stored on the capacitor? Say again. The, the force over the charge? I, I did not, I did not uh, just acoustically understand it. Mm, no, not really. Do you have an idea? The voltage, use the voltage. Use the voltage. And so uh, how can we get energy from, from voltage and from... Voltage times charge. Yeah, voltage times charge. And, and then half of it. So usually you have a, uh, a formula that is half of the, the capacitance times the voltage squared. And if we say, okay, the um, um, one capacitor or capacitance times one of these voltages is the charge, we could also rewrite it as half of charge multiplied with voltage. So this would be uh, the energy that is stored on the capacitor. And so then we can check, okay, if we do the original calculation, um, it's one half our um, charge is this 88.54 uh, picofarads and the voltage is 10 volt. And so then we get some value. Um, so, um, and, 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 um, oh no, th that's it. Um, and yeah, so Farad is ampere seconds per volt. The volt, uh, will cancel each other. Does it make sense? No, uh, charge is just ampere second, not ampere second per volt. So we get ampere second and ampere second and volt uh, amp ampere and volt gives yeah gives gives watt and watt second what second is joule so finally we get joule at the end as a unit and um, 10 times 88 is 880 and half of it is 440 you have calculated yes. something 400 42.7 and then we have pico joule which is of course also a very small amount of energy we don't have so much charge we don't have so much voltage there okay so question is and this is the, the more interesting question so what happens to this energy after we have done these changes here after we increase the distance so let's check we still have the same formula but um, we have the same charge as before, but we have, uh, so the new voltage is five times larger. Um, I don't have much space here to write it down, but the charge is the same, the voltage increased by a factor of five. So also the energy increased by a factor of five. Our new energy is five times the old energy, let's say. Hmm. Interestingly, so where, how, where, where does the energy come from? From us physically moving it? Yeah, there, there is a force between these two plates. And if we want to change the distance between the plates, if we need to pull them apart, we, we need to put some energy in, in there to oppose this force. And so then this um, yeah, mechanical energy that we needed to move the plates apart is then stored into, into the capacitor, in, in, yeah, in, into the electric field there. Um, 
Yeah, and so the other way around, if you would decrease the distance, then your capacitor, uh, while, while having, um, wh while the charge stays constant, so for example, yeah, you have built a capacitor with a plate distance like this, you have charged it to a certain voltage, you disconnect it from the source, so once again the charge stays constant, and then you would decrease the distance between the plates. Now the, the opposite thing would happen, your capacitor would lose energy, let's say, uh, the electric field would lose energy, and this is, um, yeah, you, you could get mechanical force from the plate capacitor. The, the, the plates would be automatically pulled together. Yeah, and, and so this is some force that you would be able to get out of there. Okay. Um, questions related to this subtask? Okay. Then we can continue with the last one. Uh, the um, task number D. So now the capacitor is discharged with a constant current of one milliampere. Um, and the question is, so what is then the, 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 the change rate of the voltage? Delta voltage divided by delta of the time. And how long will it take then until the plate capacitor is completely discharged? And completely discharged means we have a voltage of zero volt at the end and the closing parenthesis is maybe missing here. So how would you solve this task? Any ideas? There's one. So the current is equal to C then it's uh, dV by dT. Yeah, so this is also some very basic question on the capacitor for capacitors that um, current is, we could more generally say that current is time derivative of the charge. So if the charge changes, we need to have some current. And so now for the, for the charge, we can insert this equation here and say it's the time derivative of the capacitance and the voltage, or the product of the two. Um, and if the, if the capacitance does not change over time, we can, it's constant, exactly, and we can put it in front and say, okay, um, current at the capacitor is capacitance multiplied with the time derivative of the voltage, and if we don't really have um, if we don't really need to have the time derivative here because our current is not really a time function, we could also rewrite it and say, okay, if we have a constant current, then its capacitance and this time um, or voltage, rate of voltage change, delta voltage divided by delta time. Okay, and so if we want to have this, we just need to rewrite, rearrange this equation in this way and say delta voltage divided by delta time is uh, the current divided by the, by the capacitance. And so we have um, one milliampere and the capacitance, the, um, it's now the question which, which value we use, but I would use this one from the from the last subtask, um, the 17.7 picofarad, and once again, farad is ampere seconds per volt, and then the ampere will cancel, and we will get volt per second, which perfectly makes sense because we want to get some data voltage over uh, delta time, and then we just need to do some. 964 some number Nine. crunching and okay and so this is should be 0 0.569 and then it's microvolt per second am i right no Six it's four. it's uh, no no it's uh, 10 to the oh maybe i'm wrong um this is 10 to the power of a seven by seven at the end yeah nano. so it's but isn't this then mega? 
Oh uh, wait. So if we have we have milli, uh, we have milli which is ten to the power of minus three, and we have pico which is ten to the power of minus twelve. So um, if we bring this together, it's ten to the power of nine, right? And uh, one over seventeen is difficult to calculate in the head, but but there we we should get this. Uh, 56 point something and then I get mega or 10 to the power of 6 volts per second. Is this right? Okay. Yeah. This makes sense. And the, the next number is once again a 5, I would say. Okay. So um, quite a lot of volts per second. Uh, so we could say it's mega, it's mega volt per second, or it's volt per microsecond. Uh, we could also say, okay, it's 565 mega volt per second, or we could say it's 565 volt per microsecond. Um, okay, so then a question is, how long? Oh, there's, a, there's a question. Um, because um, it's it's uh, it's like in the order of this. Um, yeah, we have what is the capacitor of the what is the capacitance of the plate capacitor? We charge it, and then we we increase the spacing. How does the value of the capacitance change? And so that's why I would use the new value from here yeah. in this equation. Um, if the, if this would be some exam task, it should maybe be more clear. Should we use the original capacitance? Should we use the new capacitance? Uh, because the problem is, of course, if you do some mistake here, then of course also the result here will be wrong. Um, yeah, but if we would take the original capacitance, which is um, five times larger than um, we would get a smaller value there. Okay, so l last question is, how long does it take? Or how can we calculate this time? We could, you could, we can call it tau. Um, so I could uh, say, okay, here, how long does it take? We, we, we could call this tau. How would you calculate this? Yeah, yeah so we, so th th this is our voltage or range of voltage change and of course this should be the same as the, the voltage that we have at the beginning which is our 50 volts here mm -hmm. and then divided by this tau that we would like to have so our our tau we should get by our original voltage divided by this delta v divided by delta t um, and so we should have, uh, once again, if we use the values from C, we have 50 volts and then divided by the 565 um, volts per microsecond. So volts will cancel each other um, and we should get 0 0.1 microseconds, something like this, a little less. 0. To the power of six. Yeah, to the power of, um, this was to the power of 6, exactly. Yeah, so we should, we get 0. 0.88 microsecond, if I'm not mistaken. No, Nano cell. Um, no, but 50. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Right. Um, it's it's not 500 divided by 550, so it's 0 
microsecond. Does this make sense? Yeah, I think so. So in the 56.5 uh, to the power of 10, uh, like volt per second? Um, it's always confusing if you do these calculations <laughs> not on your own. Um, let me just open up Octave and uh, try to do it there. So our voltage is 50 and this delta V uh, by delta uh, T, let's call it like this. is if we have calculated correctly before was this times to the power of I'm that's, not correct. That, that's not correct right okay it should be 56.5 okay so then let's go back to this step so we said the current is one milliampere which is uh, one times ten to the power of minus three and the capacitance that we had before so maybe we should go back to some original calculation and say the epsilon is 8.854 times 10 to the power of minus 12. Our area that we had was 0 0.1 squared. The distance was mm. one millimeter. So the original capacitance was this epsilon multiplied with the area divided by this D, um, which if we multiplied with 10 to the power of 12 is 88.54 picofarads, which is what we have here. Okay, and then the, the new C was the C divided by five. And so when we have this um, 17.7, which makes sense, and so now we can try to get this delta V by delta T, which is current divided by the new capacitance, right? And so um, if, we, if we take this and divide by 10 to the power of six, okay, yeah, so we are missing some comma here. Um, yeah, which also makes, I would say, more sense. Um, yeah, if you have a thousand here, if you divide thousand by 17, we get 56 something. Okay, and so then the last step here in the calculation, our time is the voltage. We have voltage already, yeah. So tau is the voltage divided by this delta. Um, and if we take this and multiply with 10 to the power of six, then we get um, 0 0.88 microseconds. So my, my original result was right, even the is what I say, the, um, the number of mistakes must always be even so that one mistake and the other mistake can cancel each other. Okay, so it takes less than a microsecond to discharge this. And even if it's not a very high current, but it's also just a very small capacitance and um, not so much charge that is stored there. Um, yeah, and we, we could have maybe simplified this solution here also a little bit because we know that we, we know the charge. Um, so if we want to know the time, we could also s just say, okay, we have this charge and this current, this should also give us time. So if we do a check and calculate this tau, right, from the charge divided by the current and uh, the charge we have here, so 885.4 
picocoulomb and then this divided by one milliampere of current um, so charge is voltage times the capacitance yeah, so this is our charge and if we divide this charge by the current then we get the same same time obviously so also 0 0.88 microseconds which perfectly makes sense um, yeah here in this calculation <laughs>